The following VETSIM video has been created by Aviation Pro for the P1 pilot rating course of the VETSIM Pilot Training Academy. Visit academy.vetsim.net for more information. In today's video we're going to show you how to file a flight plan both IFR and VFR. So there are basically multiple ways in order to file a flight plan. You can do it either via the one of the main pilot clients, FS in or Squawkbox, but you can also file a flight plan via the VETSIM website and we're going to show you this time how to file the flight plan via the VETSIM website. So the first thing you have to do is go to the VETSIM pilot section and then we'll go over to file a flight plan. Now it doesn't really matter uh, whether you do it via FS in Squawkbox or via the VETSIM website because the sheet will look exactly the same mostly. Um, but be aware when you're using Squawkbox that you file the flight plan again in order to uh, let the other see your aircraft type correctly. So keep that in mind. And um, we're now going to take a look at this flight plan sheet. We're just going to go through it one by one. Uh, there are some uh, functions here. You can look up a plan. You can just enter a call sign and that will retrieve uh, the flight plan details from any pilot system. And then you can add your own details. Um, you can file the flight plan uh, once you have uh, completely filled every single box. You can cancel the plan and it will, it will remove uh, the plan from the system. And you must include your VETSIM ID and password for validation or you can clear the form which basically makes the whole form uh, clean so you can start again. So let's first start with an IFR flight plan and we're just going to go to the first box here. Uh, as you can see you have to select the type of flight. It's either VFR visual flight rules or IFR instrument flight rules and um, we're going to use IFR of course. Uh, the call sign uh, now I said in the previous video it's wise to choose a realistic call sign if you're flying uh, for an airline. So let's say we're going to make a flight from Amsterdam to London Heathrow with KLM. We're going to enter a realistic call sign for KLM, that's KL1029R. That's an actual call sign that's being used every day for flights from uh, Amsterdam to London Heathrow. Box number three is the aircraft type. Um, this is the aircraft type in the IKO format. Uh, if you don't know that, you have to look it up on the internet. Uh, but let's say we're going to use a 737-800. Um, it will would be the B for Boeing and then 737 and 8 for the 800 version. Uh, the special equi equipment, uh, it's not necessary to fill this in. Uh, if you want to go a bit more professional, you can uh, add some suffixes uh, right here. Uh, but for now, that's not really important. Just make sure you answer the correct aircraft type that you are using when you connect to the VETSIM network. And then box number four, it's the true airspeed. That's the um, average true airspeed at cruise for uh, depending on the aircraft type. Uh, again, you have to look this up on the internet for your aircraft type. Uh, for the Boeing 737-800, it would be around 450 knots. Box number five, very simple. It's the departure point, the departure airport. Uh, again, in the ICAO code, it would be Amsterdam. Box number six is the departure time in Zulu time. The departure time is not the time that you're actually going to take off from the runway. No, it's the time that the aircraft is pushing back or that the blocks from the wheels are removed and that you're ready to start your flight. So that's the actual departure time. So it's not the takeoff time, but the departure time and the time when the aircraft leaves the terminal and the gate. So let's say it would be um, eight o'clock local time. So that would be 19 o'clock Zulu time. Cruising altitude, again, it depends on your aircraft type and your own calculations. Now the route we're going to use today is through lower airspace. So uh, the maximum flight level that we can use is flight level 245. When choosing a flight level, you have to be aware that flights to the west use an even flight level and flights to the east use an odd flight level. So in this case, we're flying to the west. So we're going to use flight level 240. That's the maximum altitude that we can fly at. Now it might be hard sometimes to determine which flight level to use, an odd or an even flight level for flights to the north or the south, or for example. But this is the basic rule that the, uh, to the east use an odd flight level and the west an even flight level. If you're not sure, you can always ask ATC or look up a real flight plan from a real world flight in order to see which flight level they use and then you should be fine. And then we'll move over to box number eight. It's the route of the flight. As discussed in the previous video, we have to enter a valid route here. Uh, we have here, if we go to VAT routes, the uh, valid routes from 
Amsterdam to London Heathrow and as you can see there's an altitude restriction um, we have to fly between flight level 196 and flight level 245 so enter a valid route here just like that the destination again the airport in ICAO format so it would be Echo Golf Lima Lima for London Heathrow the estimated time on route uh, that's box number 10 uh, it's the time you expect to be en route it's very simple of course so um, in this case it won't be very long it depends again on the aircraft type on your uh, speed and stuff like that so uh, you have to guess maybe a little you can look up old flights that made the same uh, route as you did um, in order to get this a little bit more right but it's not very important but just it gives you uh, and the air traffic controller an idea of how long you're going to be flying then we'll move over to box 11a it's the voice capabilities and this is very important for air traffic controllers so they know uh, whether you are a voice receive and transmit pilot or a text pilot now of course we can strongly recommend to be a full voice pilot it makes it more realistic and much more easier for the controllers it might be a little bit scary at first but um, in the end it's very realistic so just buy that headset and make sure you have a microphone and speakers on uh, because it's so much more fun and so much more realistic but if you somehow have hardware problems or you still refuse to accept that realism you can um, click either receive only which means that you can hear the air traffic controller but you won't be replying back in voice or that you're a text only pilot which means you uh, transmit via text and also receive instructions via text uh, in this case we'll uh, enter full voice of course and then box number 11 is the remarks you can put any remarks here um, if you are a newbie it's wise to put that in here so the air traffic controllers are aware of that and they can uh, take care of you a little bit better and anything you have to add here uh, that's important for the air traffic controllers to know about your flight you have to put that in the remarks right here so if you are a new pilot to the VETSIM network it's wise to put something like this like a newbie or if you want to put it a little bit more nicer like um, a new pilot student pilot uh, put that here that's very uh, wise to do so the air traffic controllers know that the fuel on board uh, again it depends on the calculations uh, of course uh, flight simulator allows you to have infinitive fuel but um, yeah j just to add some more realism uh, just make some realistic fuel calculations and that your aircraft is not too heavy or too light so let's say we have uh, one hour and 40 minutes of fuel on board the alternate airport um, this is the airport where you're going to fly to if you can't land at London Heathrow or your destination airport you can choose uh, any airport in the area where your aircraft can land as well so just enter that here um, for example if we're going to fly to uh, London Heathrow we could land at Gatwick as an alternate the pilot's name the aircraft home base again in the same format um, just using a fake name here John Welsh and then we're gonna put the airport right here so uh, that's your real first name your real last name and your aircraft base airport and then box number 15 is the FETSIM ID and your FETSIM password in box number 16 so that's basically how you fill up a flight plan and file a flight plan uh, when you're ready just press that button and your flight plan will be sent make sure you connect with the same call sign as you did right here and the air traffic controllers will receive your flight plan in good order so now that we have uh, filled up an IFR flight plan let's quickly take a look at a VFR flight plan uh, it's not much of a difference um, we're just going to use VFR in this case of course and let's say we're going to make a little flight in the Netherlands uh, using a Dutch re registered aircraft uh, so we're going to be using the uh, registration that you can find on the back of the aircraft on the sides of the aircraft um, again so we choose the pop out of Bravo Yankee Alpha uh, we discussed that in the previous video as well again we're going to be using the ICAO code of the aircraft the Beechcraft Baron 58 the true airspeed uh, obviously it would be a little bit lower I don't know the exact number here but let's say 180 knots the departure point uh, let's say we're going to depart from Amsterdam again the departure time and the cruising altitudes which would be in this case a little bit lower 
Now we'll move over to the route. Uh, as discussed in the previous video, uh, you have to add landmarks here. So um, you're not really flying via airways. In the US you could use Victor Airways, but in Europe it's a bit different. Um, there are just airspaces you have to avoid, but you can fly via landmarks, via visible landmarks. Um, using those landmarks you make your route and fly that route when you're in the air. So uh, just add some cities here, some towns or f very uh, visible landmarks so that the air traffic controllers have a bit of an idea uh, what route you're going to fly. So let's say we're going to make a flight from Amsterdam to Rotterdam. Um, what you could do is start with the ICAO code of the uh, airport you're going to depart from and then just enter the cities uh, where you're going to fly to uh, and the air traffic controllers should have a bit of an idea of where those cities are and can take care of that with the other traffic and then we enter the arrival airport. Now of course from the departure airport there are certain routes you have to follow as a VFR airplane. Uh, you can pick that route according to your um, flying cruising route and of course at the arrival airport you also have uh, arrival routes so uh, make sure you uh, fly to one of those points uh, at the end of your uh, cruising route. Okay? We're going to discuss this further when we're going to um, discuss VFR navigation. So the destination airport is just um, the arrival airport, in this case Rotterdam. Uh, the estimated time en route, let's say 30 minutes. Uh, this is just the same as the IFR flight plan. The fuel on board, well, we can leave that there. The alternate airport, um, you could also say that you're going to return to your um, home airport or the, the departure airport. Uh, if the airports are close to each other, that's not really a problem. Uh, so if something happens at Rotterdam, the weather turns very bad or the runway is closed, we just return to the airports we depart from. And again, your pilot name, your aircraft home base, and the FATSIM ID and the FATSIM password. And one more thing we have to keep in mind. Um, if you're going to fly at night, like uh, with this flight, uh, obviously it would be dark around this time of year. So uh, if you're going to use daylight in Flight Simulator, put that in your flight plan. Uh, remark so daylight so the air traffic controller knows that you're using daylight and that you're not flying uh, in the night using special procedures or something like that uh, also uh, when you're using uh, clear weather for example uh, if you still want to fl uh, fly VFR but the real world weather in your area is very bad uh, you have to uh, put it in your flight plan remark so HC can take care of that as well. Of course it's uh, wise to use the real world weather together with the VATSIM air traffic controllers but if you're using clear weather put that in your flight plan remarks. It's very important. So this is basically how you fill up the flight plan sheet. Um, now you're ready to file the flight plan. Again if you fly using Squawk Box be sure to file the flight plan via Squawk Box one more time. Uh, as you can see it's pretty easy. Um, but you just have to see this uh, just once in order to do it properly yourself later on. So thanks for watching this video here on the Vets and Pilot Training Academy. We hope this video will help you out. In the next video we're going to start with the fun part. We're going to take a look at the first basics of communication. So we will see you on the next video and good luck with flying on Vetsim.